What's up, Joe? What's up, everybody? Well, the Sweet 16 was anything but sweet for our man L-Dub. His bracket took a beating. But he's already recovered, and he joins us to talk about the games that were and to give us his picks for the teams that he believes will emerge from the Elite Eight and proceed on to the Final Four. So stay right there. We're back with the resilient L-Dub on Sports 360. Well, we've just completed the Sweet 16 of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament, and we're uh, circling back with our man L-Dub. Um, L-Dub had a tough little run there through the Sweet 16. Uh, coming into the round, you, you, you were looking pretty good, but the games didn't go quite as expected. But glad to have you on to talk about it all and as we look forward to the Elite Eight. So how you doing today, L-Dub? Uh, a little disappointed, but I'm all right, man. I can handle it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it. you know, there were some, you know, some really competitive games, uh, some games that went down to the wire. We had an overtime game between, uh, uh, what was it, Purdue and, and Tennessee. Um, and then we had some games that were, you know, blowouts or semi blowouts. Um, and so we had a little bit of everything in this round of the sweet 16. And I'd like to just jump into it and, and start off with, uh, you know, the first set of games that we saw on Thursday, uh, get your take on those games. And then we'll, uh, look ahead to the elite eight, but why don't we start in the West with Gonzaga and Florida state, um, you know, you you had picked Florida State in that game, and Gonzaga came out on top. What did you see in that game? Well, Florida State, first of all, came out flat. I don't know if it was because of the you know the teammate losing his father, or the fact that you know they had two players that was out of the rotation. I don't know which two of the I don't know what part was the factor, but either way, Gonzaga allowed them to stay in the game, and Florida State had a chance. But they never could get over the hump. I mean, you could always see them. You know how you scratch and claw to get somewhere, and then you get there, and then you're just out of steam. But uh, at the end of the game, it came down to Coach Few. You know, and I I didn't talk enough about Coach Few, which which I do respect him a lot. He proved again, you know, that he could lead his team to the elite eight. And uh, the West Coast at West Coast Player of the Year, that kid uh, Hachimura, he played big. I mean, he was definitely the the factor and he came up big in every special moment so you know Gonzaga just basically outplayed him you know when it came down to the crunch you know to the wire right and so they they advanced to the elite eight um as was Texas Tech as they were able to take care of Michigan man this, this to me this was this was an embarrassment to the sweet 16 actually and that, and that's why I didn't uh see Michigan getting here and uh I, I, I knew Texas Tech would probably, you know, go through an easier bracket and make it. We talked about that. But uh they they'll be exiting next game also because I mean they, they just don't show consistency on offense nor defense. Texas Tech plays a little better defense, but the inconsistency of offense, you know, that's that's just it's just not gonna work. And it's not like Texas Tech was better than Michigan. It was that Michigan just, you know, they just couldn't, they didn't show up. That's all I can tell you. They didn't show up. Right, right. Um, and so uh, we, we see that matchup um, coming up in, in the Elite Eight. Um, but let's go to the South, and let's start with uh, what I thought was one of the more entertaining games, and that was Purdue and Tennessee. Okay, that, that, that's Tennessee versus Purdue. This was a hard pick for me. You know, we talked about it because of my ties with, with uh, Carson Edwards. And also with the way that Tennessee was grinding, you know, to get to the Sweet 16, I, I, I really applauded that. But at the end, Carson did everything and, and all the right things at the right time for Purdue. And Tennessee, just, they stayed in foul trouble. Even with uh, the kid Ryan Klein scoring the 27 points, 
Carson was the determining factor to prove, you know, he, he proved that he was too much for Tennessee. And uh, Tennessee fought hard, but when they really needed to make a play, you know, they never could make a play, and Purdue always did make a play. Uh, and that seemed to be the difference in the game, that Purdue made plays when they needed them, and Tennessee couldn't. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, there there was some some great shot making there um, in in the second half. I mean, yeah. both sides. It it really turned into an entertaining game, and it was a shame that one of those teams had to had to lose. But um, you know, hats off to Purdue because they yeah. they they um, they certainly uh, deserve to come out on top there. Um, if, what Ryan, about, if that kid ahead. Ryan Klein, excuse me, if that kid Ryan Klein ever decided to come out of his shell, that was the game because they needed everything he gave. And, uh, you know, like I said, and Carson getting the ball at the end of the game, I mean, you know, everybody said, well, he could have won the game. The fact that he hit the two to send it into overtime was was big because, you know, you're talking about less than one second. To get open and to get the shot off to be fouled, that was a big play. That was a big play. Right. It was. No doubt about it. Um, And there was a little – there was a little complaining by – uh, by Tennessee, uh, the Tennessee player, that it wasn't a foul, but he jumped into him, and um, you know, and and you look, and, and Carson hit you know some clutch free throws, especially after missing that first one. Correct, uh, correct. That was so, big, no doubt about it. And then in the South, um, UVA and Oregon. Well, this was an interesting matchup, but uh. You know, at the end, you kind of knew uh, VA being the experienced team, they would prevail. Uh, again, they, they seem to settle for too many outside shots for me, being that they were a veteran team. And everybody knows that their post play was better than Argonne's. With Bo Bo being out of the game, they should have really exploited that and got those kids in foul trouble. But they didn't. But uh, whenever they – uh. You know, whenever they did put it together at the end right there, you know, they hit they hit the shots they need to hit. They, uh, you know, maintain defensive pose, composure that, you know, that uh, Virginia has. But all I can tell them, before they step on the floor with Carson Edwards and Purdue, they better be readjusted their uh, offensive game because you, you're not going to be able to play that kind of defense and just stop them from scoring. Uh, you know, they, they, they have scores on Purdue's team, so. Virginia's going to have to step their game up. But that was an exciting game. And, you know, those young kids from Oregon, they uh, they, 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 they proved to be a force to be reckoned with, you know, in the coming years with that kid, the young kid, King. He was he was shooting lights out. So I see Coach Altman having a, you know, having a great team next year also. Okay. And so the matchups are set there with Gonzaga and Texas Tech and UVA and Purdue, and we'll come back to those uh, in a minute. But uh, let's first um, go to the Friday games, the games from last night. Um, and let's go to the Midwest. And let's start with North Car- Carolina and Auburn. Uh, didn't quite see this one coming. Um, uh, <laughs> what happened there? What did you see in that game? Well, you can't say it was an upset because you'd be discrediting Auburn, you know, because they do have athletes. You know, I haven't seen them play this well ever, but uh, this was a thrashing. I mean, Auburn won, like I tell you, in every facet of the game. They outran them, they outworked them, they out-executed them, out-rebound them, and they outscored uh, North Carolina. And you couldn't have foreseen this game coming and going this way ever. Uh, but that's again. That's why the game's got to be played. We always talk about that. <laughs> you know, the game got to be played. And uh, definitely, man, I want to. I personally want to send a prayer out to that kid, Chumi Okiki. That, that guy was doing everything Auburn ever could ask of him before he got hurt. And you know, I just wish that kid a speedy recovery and a successful recovery. He, he balled last night. And uh, you know, with UNC, they got four potential NBA players on their team. And they literally didn't show up last night. So the hats go off to uh, Auburn and uh, Coach Pearl because their game plan was executed very well. 
Right. And and then we had a another exciting matchup in the Midwest with Houston and Kentucky. Um, and I know how you know the special place in your heart that Houston has. Uh, so that, I know that was a particularly tough one, but a very very good game came down to the wire. And you know Kentucky made the plays down the stretch. So uh, what did you see overall in that game? Well, just like you just said, man, this game here was a. Uh, I was personally invested in, and you know, having a player that uh that I had the pleasure of coaching for two years in high school with Galen Robinson, playing for Houston. He's the point guard. Uh, this was a hard fought battle, man. I mean, these guys went blow for blow. Kentucky made plays when they needed to most. Came down to the execution, and you know, in the final attempt, you know, to savage the win, Houston came up short. Uh, but like I said, Coach Sampson and his staff did a good job of representing the Cougars, and and the players proved to you know they, they actually provided the city with a lot of excitement and, and a lot of victories, and actually they, they made history. They, they had a lot of history making moments in uh, 2019. But uh, Kentucky uh, did what they did. They came up big in the in the big games, and they only way to the elite uh, to the elite eight. But we just want to know. We just want to let the Cougars know. Go Cougs! We still got their support. We still support them. Yeah, and and PJ Washington uh, was big for Kentucky. I mean, just having him back, but also he just played. Um, he played a big game last night, and you know that block late in the game that that led to a, a three pointer on the other end was was huge. So. Um, you know, like I said, they made the plays down the stretch and, and they move on. Okay, and we move on to the East, LSU and Michigan State. Um, a game that wasn't as competitive as I as I think many thought it would be. Um uh how did you how did you see that game? Man, I mean everybody that, that, that knew anything about these two teams knew that uh, LSU had the size advantage, but Everybody, I guess, except LSU knew this. You know, they came out shooting, you know, 17, 20 foot shots. And MSU, the kid, uh, Aaron uh, Henry, whom the coach had got into the altercation with, Coach Izzo had the altercation with. I mean, this kid here came out and had a career game. He, 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 he was just, coach, coach just let him go loose around the basket, offensive rebound. And then the kid Cassius Winston, you know, he led the way he controlled the whole first half with the with the pace. Before the game, Kenny Smith had said, uh, the commentator Kenny Smith said, uh, you know, whichever one of these, if Cassius Winston slows the ball down and, and executes the half court, they're probably going to win. If if the little point guard uh, Waters could speed the game up and get the ball inside, you know, not have to run plays, they would win. And that really was the telling tale of the game. Cassius Winston slowed it down, executed the offense, you know, gave gave the players the ball at the right time. And even though they were blowing them out where well, they had a big lead, you know, LSU came out of halftime and evidently I think they listened to Coach Benford. You know, he must have told them to go inside and they went inside and brought the score back to four points. But then they got right back into their, their MO of, of the earlier part of the game, started shooting threes and everything, and Michigan State just, just walked away with them. Uh, why they didn't keep the ball inside, I don't know, but uh, it, it definitely cost them you know, a chance to even compete for the uh, Elite Eight. Yeah, and I thought Aaron Henry was big in that first half, too. I mean, just keeping the ball alive, second chance points for the team and so on. Um, uh, and, and Michigan State said that everywhere, you know, they, they were locker room, hotel room, wherever, you know, they had these reminders to rebound, rebound, rebound. And they really crashed the boards. And I think that um, that surprised me. And I thought it was a big part of that game. Um, and then our last game, uh, again, a very, very good game. Duke and Virginia Tech. And I don't know how many times Duke can have point blank shots by the other team uh at the end of the game not find its mark but we saw it again for the second time in a row uh against Virginia Tech what about that game coach buzz william drew up 
the perfect play. And I mean, I know I'm starting from the back end, but he, he drew up the perfect play. Uh, everyone, including myself, thought Blackshear would be getting the ball because, you know, Blackshear led him in scoring. He, he, he had 18 points and, you know, he kind of like was, ha- he wasn't having his way, but he was probably one of the only ones that could force his will and, and get it done. And for him to run the play for the kid Hill, and he's, you know, he, he's right there at the goal. I, I only wish that he would have, uh, been expecting contact and not running from contact. Had he not been running from Zion's contact, I think he would have made the shot. But the fact that he was going away from the basket was the difference in whether or not, you know, he made the little short uh, put back. And I don't really think he understood how much time 1.1 yeah. is. I mean, again, you have college players and you have point guards. Point guards you know, manage the clock and they understand time clock management. But a lot of the players, the scorers, they don't understand that. I mean, even in the NBA, you got scorers that don't understand that. That that 1.1 second is a lot of time. But uh, it was a hard fought game, just like we had stated earlier. It would be. I, t- I told you that guy uh, Blackshear would, you know, put up, uh, you know, the the the, the needed uh, recipe, whether it be rebound scoring or whatever, and he did. But uh, Duke playing without Cam Reddish, you know they held they held off in every way that uh, Virginia Tech threw at them. They, they held off, and uh, I know Virginia Tech beat Duke in the regular season without Zion, but Zion was there last night, <laughs> and he led all scored with 23 points. And Duke point uh, point guard Trey Jones stepped up big with his 22. Yeah, uh, he that sure was, did. That wasn't expected, but uh. Uh, Duke's path looks a lot easier now to the ship. So, uh, I, you know, you, 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 you one that kind of told me about, you know, you said, you know, with Zion and everyone knows Zion could play. I just didn't think, uh, Duke would withstand having a target on their back, you know, with, with so many, you know, when you're number one, everyone comes at you. And I didn't know how all those freshmen would handle that. And, uh, it, it was evident that there were two teams that could have beat them. But they didn't beat them. And it's not to say that Virginia Tech would have won last night, even if they would have scored that. How, however, it just proves the point that, you know, Duke is very beatable. But now looking at the, the, the guys left in the eight, you know, with North Carolina gone, with Florida State gone, uh, I mean, the only team that I even see close to competing with them is Gonzaga on a perfect night. Mm. Okay. So then now let's look ahead then to – um the uh, the elite eight and let's stay right there in the east and look at the matchup between duke and msu okay duke and msu what i see there is again that's two coaches with two totally different uh strategies you know they they have two totally different strategies but with, with zion being the x factor again uh, you know, I, I I can no longer say that, that this kid, you know, by far, we already knew he was hands down the best player in the country. But to to do what he does on a on a nightly basis, you know, double team, triple team, hey, I I, I don't see anyone stopping Duke. I, I see Zion winning. I mean, I see Duke winning. Should I say over okay. Michigan? All right, so we have Duke over Michigan State in in that game um and we're jumping around here a little bit because uh but let's go to the west um gonzaga and texas tech and again uh i, I see gonzaga beating texas tech by double digits uh i, I know texas tech plays defense but i think there's too many weapons on gonzaga offensively and you know gonzaga is known for their defense and uh I just think Gonzaga's been there more time. Coach Few, again, giving him credit. Uh, I think he prepares his players well. Uh, not taking anything from the guys from Texas Tech, you know, new coach, but uh, I, I just don't think they can uh, withstand what Gonzaga's going to bring. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Gonzaga in that one. Um, and then in the south, we have Virginia and Purdue. Uh, again, 
Purdue has offense, and, you know, they've always had offense, and they played, you know, better defense the last game. Uh, Virginia's been stagnant through the whole uh, tournament, not just this game, the game against Oregon, the game against Oklahoma, the, and even the game against Gordon Webb. Uh, so if they if they are any indication of, you know, that's who they're going to be, if that's any indication of who they, who they are, that Purdue's going to beat them. So I'm going with Purdue in this one. Yeah, I mean, that's almost a classic clash of styles in that game. Um, and so you have Purdue coming out on top. Okay, and then in our last matchup, uh, should be a good one, Auburn and Kentucky. Who are you picking yeah. there? Well, with, 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 with the kid coming back last night, playing the way he played, doing one of those Zion appearance, making one of those Zion appearances last night from Kentucky, I'm going with Kentucky because Auburn lost a big player in Okiki. And like I say, you can ride away for a little while, but reality sets in. And Akiki is a big part of their offense. When he when he went out and they came back in with two subs that come in for him, I mean, it's just the offensive presence was just lost. Uh, you know, they, they they couldn't score effectively around the basket. They were missing free throws and all those things Akiki brought to the team. So w- without Akiki, uh, I see Kentucky winning this game. Yeah, I think that's a tough blow for Auburn. Um, it's going to be tough to overcome that. I think the other thing to keep an eye on is uh, P.J. Washington's health. You know, is he going to, you know, after coming back and playing well last night, um, you know, is he still going to be physically up to it? Um, and we'll see how he is today and what the reports are today, and we'll see, you know, whether he can he's ready to go tomorrow. But you you have Kentucky in that one. Correct. Okay, so uh, the final four um, is, that you have is Duke, Gonzaga, Purdue, and Kentucky. All right, L Dub. So we'll see what happens, man. Um, again, it was a, a a tough Sweet Sixteen for you, but you know, <laughs> appreciate you coming back on the show and 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 you know, standing up at the mic and and, and giving us your view on what transpired in the sweet 16 and then also um as we look ahead to the lead eight and who's going to come out of that so um all right so we put another one in the books um should be exciting games they kick off later today and um we'll catch up with you probably midweek um and get your thoughts on the final four right right well we it was a point in there where we were starting to think uh, you know, hey, man, we understand Kentucky has followers. We know Duke has followers. We know Purdue has law followers, and Gonzaga has law followers. But at the end of the game, all those other teams had a chance to win. That was the, you know, that was the difference this year as opposed to in the, in the past. You say, well, you know, we're talking about ratings. We're talking about who has fans that travel, you know. Uh, and, and, again, we know Houston probably wouldn't have as many fans as a Kentucky Kentucky is loyal, even if they graduated from Pikesville or a Murray State, they still gonna be a Kentucky fan. Uh, and and those people come in droves. So this year, you know, the teams earned their keeps. You know, every game was played and uh, opposing team had opportunities to win the game. You know, referees didn't decide the outcome. Uh the Purdue game, I still don't think the referee decided the outcome. That was a foul. I mean yeah, anyway. I think so too. Yep. That was a foul. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, no, no question. I think, um, again, the games, you know, we had some very competitive games, had some exciting games, and we had some just really great individual performances and team performances. And so um, no complaints here in terms of the teams that are remaining. They certainly have earned it. And we look forward to the next round. Sounds good. Well, you have a great day today, man. Enjoy talking and hopefully, uh, the games will be exciting as these were yep. some of these were some of these games were sure okay l dub so we'll catch up again um enjoy the games all right take care jeff okay